So I am in the middle of the hardest Genshin Impact challenge of my entire life, all right? I'm trying to 36 star the Abyss in just three weeks from a completely brand new free to play account starting at adventure rank one. But it got me thinking, if I were to make a new account, who would be the characters that I would pull for? Which characters have the biggest bang for your buck in terms of primo gems or are just the most fun characters to build teams around? I'm gonna give you guys my top five characters because top five good YouTube number, but also I think it is a good representation of how many limited five-star characters you could get in about a year of playing Genshin. I'm also gonna throw in some honorable mentions, but guys, let's go. So I promise I'll have some less obvious, hotter takes in this video, but let's get the easy ones out of the way. First up, Kazuha. Look, Animo is the ultimate jack of all trades support element that can be splashed onto pretty much every single team in the game and kazuha is the king his ascension four passives damage amplification is one of the best buffs in the entire game when he swirls with an element he buffs all the damage of that element scaling off his elemental mastery and you can do that with multiple different elements at the same time so it's just crazy and that is on top of viridus and venerer one of the best artifact sets in the entire game the reason why animo is so good shredding resistances even further. Another thing I think people just kind of sleep on Kazuha for is just how amazing his crowd control ability is. The reason why it's so good is because it is quick and it is accurate. While Venti Burst is insane, it happens a fixed distance away from him and shoots in the direction of a target that it just randomly chooses. It can be kind of frustrating, but Kazuha's crowd control happens around his character model, which is the easiest thing for you to control as the player. You can do the top version for a little bit of crowd control. You can do the hold version for a huge, big AOE crowd control. It's super quick, accurate. Like I said, it feels amazing. Kazuha just also does a lot of freaking damage with very low investment into his damaging stats. And that is partly because he is an animo character. That's how Swirl works off of Elemental Mastery, character levels and all that. But dude, Kazuha just does attacks so often. His plunge attack does a lot of damage amplification too. He's just that good. And speaking of low investment, he's super easy to build. Get him on four piece spirit as Venerer. It's a set everybody should have. It's one of the best in the game. Stack elemental mastery on him and put him on the completely free to play craftable iron sting. And you've got a top tier Kazuha build. Now this isn't to say he is the best animal character in every situation ever. All right, Sucrose can be better than Kazuha because of how much elemental mastery she specifically gives to the team. All right, Sucrose is goaded. And then we've got Jean and Sean Yun who have roll consolidation. They can swirl, but they also heal the team. So he's absolutely godlike, but he's not just flat out the best animal character at all times. And homies, let's get this out of the way early into the video. I am not just choosing Kazuha because he's broken. I'm choosing Kazuha because he is unbelievably fun to play. He feels fast. He feels fluid. He feels buttery smooth. There are plenty of characters in Genshin Impact that are considered very good that I do not find fun to play. And I haven't even mentioned Kazuha out of combat. Dude, look, he's half of Animo Resonance to make your team run faster. He has a sprint consuming stamina passive so it consumes less and then dude his skill legitimate cheat code boosts you up into the air a little bit or a lot of it with the hold you can jump and use it it's unbelievably fun it trivializes so many uh puzzles and gets impact dude he is invaluable he's fun he's broken he's just one of the best characters in the game and i want him now, my second and last obvious pick is Ye Lon. I think Hydro is the best element in the entire game. Hydro is necessary in pretty much all of Genshin's best, most meta reactions. I'm talking Vaporize, Hyper Bloom, Burgeon, and even not top meta, but Freeze needs Hydro too. Ye Lon is the queen of applying Hydro where you want it, when you want it, completely off field with her burst. It doesn't stop there. Yelon does a ton of damage. Her skill multiplier is huge. Her burst lasts a super long time with multiple hits of high Hydro damage. And she even has a passive that raises the on-field character's damage percent the longer they're on field. She also generates a ton of Hydro particles, which helps her, it helps the team. And she's also very free to play friendly to build. Favonius Warbo, we all got one for free it's one of her best weapons in the entire game i am a veteran player 
I've had Yalon since the day she came out. I use her every day and she's on a Favonius Warbow, baby. I don't need Aqua Simulacra. I've never felt like I needed it. She does a ton of damage and gets a ton of energy just with Fav. She's good. Now, lots of people will argue she's too similar to Xing Cho. She's just a little bit better than Xing Cho. Or some people say she's just a little bit worse than Xing Cho. Now, let me ask you this. If that's true, why would you not want two Yalons or two Xing Chos on your account? One's on a Hyperbloom team, one's on Vape. Both of them are on Hyperbloom teams. One of them's on Freeze, one of them's on Burgeon. One Burgeon team, one Vape team, okay? It just makes sense. She's super high damage. She drives some of the best reactions in the entire game. She's unbelievably versatile. And there's one other thing. Just like Kazuha, she's one of the most fun and best to have exploration characters in the entire game. She runs around the map at light speed. She groups up enemies too. And even while she's running, it heals your stamina bar, okay? She's just so unbelievably good in so many ways. I would hate to miss her. Next, I have All Hytham. All Hytham is the first five-star on-field DPS character I have on this list for good reason. There are so many five-star DPS characters, but you don't need very many of them on your account in Genshin. I've got a whole video about this topic. I would go check it out, but why do I choose All Hytham? It is for three big reasons. Versatility, strength, and Fun. All Hytham is a very high damage unit. All right, there's nothing too special to add to that. He does his damage through on-field infused Dendro normal attacks and his burst. But applying a ton of Dendro on field, especially while doing a lot of damage, is something insanely nice to have in Genshin. Teams like Hyper Bloom, Burgeon, Aggravate, and Spread, even Bloom, they all want someone who can apply Dendro quickly, and All Hytham does it. Some of these teams, like Hyper Bloom, like Burgeon, they are pretty low personal damage teams. You can have characters on those teams that don't have super high crit stats, that aren't doing a ton of raw damage, and the team will work just fine because the reactions are that good. All Hytham has all those reactions that are still doing work while he himself is doing a ton of damage. I think he just blows open the damage ceiling of a ton of teams in Genshin. It's so easy to 36 star with this man because he's that good. So he's strong, works on pretty much every Dendro team, but he's also super freaking fun, man. His animations are super fluid. The hit satisfaction of his burst mirrors attack feels really good, but he's also just a character that can be optimized a ton. Yes, you can unga bunga mash your normal attacks and you're gonna pop off, but there's so much room to min max him. I'm talking canceling his normal attacks at certain times, balancing the mirror mechanic from his burst, quick swapping into other characters, coming back in. You can even aim his skill up, weave in plunge attacks that do a ton of damage. The freedom when you're playing all high them to, you know, maximize your damage to show just how much work you put in is really freaking cool. I love the high skill cap characters and all the other reasons I mentioned above are why all high them is really good and I would love to get him. Next up is a character I don't think anyone would have guessed I would put up here. It's Sean Yoon. So look, Sean Yoon is Animo. We already went over all the latent benefits of Animo with Kazuha, so I'm not gonna say him again. She also has insane exploration prowess, just like Kazuha. She's bouncing around the world, flying around at light speed. It is extremely fun in the day-to-day -day of Genshin. And on top of that, she has what we call role consolidation. She does multiple things all in one package. Things that you would normally need one, two, or even three characters sometimes to do. Sean Yun can swirl beard as a better, all right? Animal character, that is great. She is a healer, so she can heal the entire team up with her burst, and she's also a buffer. The plunge attack buff that she gives to the team, she's buffing, healing, and shredding resistances all in one. But while those reasons are 100% huge factors into why she's on this list, it's not even the single biggest reason why I would pull her. Put simply, Shanyan makes lesser used characters or even weak characters strong. She can seriously turn any single character into decent, but for characters that get buffed a little bit beyond decent, let's go. There's Chong Yun and Ayaka who can cryo plunge, all right? We've got Ga Ming, C6 Bennett, and the standard superstar overnight, 
Diluc. Quite literally any catalyst in the game can pop off because their plunge attack is an element. So Barbara or Yanfei do work. And even C0 Hu Tao gets a huge buff. That encompassed a lot of characters alone, but I promise you that wasn't even close to all the possibilities of viable teams that Sean Yun can create. Characters that do role consolidation, multiple things at the same time, and especially make all the other characters on their team feel even better are total wins in my book. So let's get into the honorable mentions. These are some of my favorite characters in the entire game or characters with huge value. I just wouldn't prioritize them as highly if I were making a new account, but they're still godlike and I wanted to give him a shout out. So first is Hu Tao. She is still an insanely top tier DPS who does crazy high damage to this day with some of the most fun vape teams in Genshin. But the problem is she's more fun and comfortable to play at Constellation 1. I have had Constellation 1 Hu Tao on my main ever since her release. So I think it would not be fair for me to rank Hu Tao here when this is just a grab the character C0 list, all right? But if you love Hu Tao, you're willing to grab her C1, I 100% absolutely recommend picking her up. But also, if you don't wanna grab the C1, but you're still looking for Hu Tao, she's really good. You're just gonna have to learn how to jump cancel with her. The damage ceiling of C0 and C1 is practically identical. She's just more comfortable play at C1. Next is Raiden Shogun. Raiden is one of the best characters in the entire game. She can drive Hyperbloom, she can carry, and she even provides support to all the characters on the team. I just think at C0, there are stronger damage options to choose from with more unique teams. That's why I chose Al Haitham on this list. And then Hyperbloom, right? I've cleared the abyss a hundred times with Hyperbloom. I don't need to force Hyperbloom onto a new account that I was making, okay? And I wouldn't pull a five star just to make them a Hyperbloom drive. Driver. So she's great, but not my first priority. My final honorable mention is Ayaka. I sang Ayaka's praises a lot in my Ayaka Teams video that if you love Ayaka, you should absolutely go check out, but she's just not as top tier as she used to be. And I think to make her, you know, creative teams work the best they can, they need a lot of five-star support. And when I'm making an account like this, I don't want to have to pull those five stars to make Ayaka shine, you know? So I love Ayaka, super fun, super versatile, way more versatile than people give her credit for, but not first priority, wanted to shout her out. Now, believe it or not, I fought a lot with if I should put this character on this list, but fans of the channel are not going to be surprised when they see me sneak Nilu onto this list. Look, it's no secret, I think Nilu is absolutely broken. She requires very low investment to just destroy things. And she even makes the other three characters on your team require very low investment to shred through Abyss with 36 stars. Nilu stacks HP, that's it. Get a character on Deepwood, you're good. And now figure out the character who's creating all the blooms, stack elemental mastery on them, okay? you're done. You don't have to worry about crit stats. You don't have to worry about attack. You don't even have to worry about the hell of getting an onset elemental goblin. Like Squidward with the Krabby Patty, I literally think the only people who hate on Nilu are just people that haven't tried her. Now, people will argue she's not versatile. Of course, she's not by the definition of only being able to be used with Hydro and Dendro characters. But the teams you can run within those confines are way more diverse than people care to admit. Yes, her best, most optimal iterations of the Bloom teams have Nahida and Kokomi, two other five stars, all right? But I genuinely think this is a bad argument. Every single team comp in all of Genshin has a most optimal version. That's like saying Hyper Bloom teams aren't that good if you're not running Shingcho, Nahida, and Raiden. Or like saying national teams aren't that good if you're not using Child. I think most people know that's Cap. At the end of the day, why is Nilu here? I think Nilu Bloom is fun. Watching the screen get filled with green and blue explosions is extremely satisfying, okay? And watching my health bars dance up and down makes the team feel a lot more intricate and interactive. When I sat and thought about this account, I felt a little sad thinking I wouldn't have the option to play a Nilu Bloom team. So I had to put her on.
All right, I'm talking about Nahida. Yes, she's arguably the best character in the entire game. She's the best Nedro character in the entire game. She's the best Nedro applicator in the entire game. But she's not completely 100% necessary to have on an account, all right? I think there's tons of Nedro characters that can do what Nahida does, obviously just a little bit worse. Now, if you love Dendro teams or just want to play the most top tier best meta teams in all of Genshin, or you're just a Nahida fan, I 1 million percent recommend her. She's literally the GOAT. But I just thought for my new account, I've had my fun with Nahida on my main, all right? I legit use her all the time. I just thought as a Genshin veteran making a new account, I thought I'd challenge myself a little bit more, make my teams have to be a little bit more creative and not choose Nita. But for real, she's like the best character in the entire game. If you want to clap all the content, grab her. Homies, I hope you had some fun with this video or learned something from my perspective on how I look at characters. Now, like I said, I am doing the hardest Genshin Impact Challenge of my entire life, a brand new, completely free to play account that I created a couple days ago, trying to 36 star the abyss in just three weeks with the, uh, the worst banners like ever, by the way. And it's going to be all live on Twitch. I have streamed every single day of this challenge. I will not miss a beat, okay? So dudes, if you wanna be a part of this journey, please hop into the Twitch, but there will be one absolute banger YouTube video to top it all off. But if you wanna be a part of the day-to-day, -day, wanna be a part of the adventure, check out the Twitch, baby, okay? Huge shout outs to the patrons that make these videos possible, that support me and my girlfriend doing all this kind of stuff, okay? Shout outs to them, I'm talking Zick. I'm talking Launcy, I'm talking Rats, I'm talking a Spangle and Denzel. Thank you guys oh so very much and thank you guys on YouTube, all right? Hey, drop a sub. We're close to 50K. We might even hit 50K before this video and I'm partying on stream. Let's get 100K by the end of the year. Thank you guys so much for watching and hey, I'll see you next time.